Hey folks, I wanted to just take a, a few minutes today to look at an opportunity in uh, a sector that uh, we could we always watch very closely, but we think there's an opportunity here to um, uh, go a little bit against what the common sense uh, would, would indicate, and, and that's in the energy sector. One of the things that we want to understand is if you just look at the price of oil, for example, which I have a simple chart of here, a lot of people are asking, well, you know, currently uh, looking at crude oil trading around high 50s, 60 bucks, whatever, give or take. Um, you know, how is that being justified with an economy that's, uh, for all intents and purposes, should still be slower than it was uh, pre-pandemic? And one of the things that you, you, you may want to consider is uh, what analysts are trying to, to price in or, or try to, to project is the reopening trade actually for a for some period of time getting momentum in the economy to a point where things like oil or even parts of equities could overshoot in a much more uh, powerful way than people think just not that that moment that, that that momentum will be sustainable but because of the pent-up demand um i'm still trying to get my head around if i really subscribe to that theory in terms of being able to 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 accelerate at such um uh, at such an increasing rate but it does make sense as far as i'm concerned so when we look at something like oil um you know it would not be out of the question as far as i'm concerned to see 70 maybe maybe even 80 dollar a barrel oil not because uh the economy is that strong for a longer period of time but because of that pent up demand where everyone's going to start traveling and flying and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, these are just some of the you know research thoughts that I hear out there, so I thought I would share that. As this translates into the equity market, uh, what you may want to look at, this by the way is a price of oil chart, so you can see it's kind of coiling up here, potentially looking to bust higher. If you look at the equity market, you look at the XLE ETF. This represents your uh, energy sector of the S&P 500. And if I zoom in a bit closer here, you can see that the energy sector still basically remains, you know, well below uh, where where those energy stocks were trading uh, in January 2020, before the pandemic hit, or at least before we knew it had hit. Um, so if you look at it this way, you can, and I'm going to zoom in a bit closer, just so this can be a bit more visually appealing. You can kind of see that you could make the argument that this is purely technical now. Uh, that we're, we're at a, a juncture here where the market is essentially consolidating below, you know, in terms of the XLE ETF around $45. And it could sooner rather than later over the next month or two, maybe, or something like that, could start accelerating higher, uh, maybe into the mid to high 50s. Uh, just looking at that chart. Let's have a look at XLE as it relates to in relative terms versus the S&P 500. Uh, here you can see uh, a, a sector that obviously, if that isn't clear, has been underperforming the S&P 500 for a lengthy period of time. And if you draw some simple trend lines here, and again, this is a lot of times an oversimplification of things, but just to kind of give you an idea, if I'm gonna make this a weekly chart, um, you know, you could make the argument that you know we're just we haven't even really gotten to the point where we're touching the downtrend line so there's plenty more there let's have another look at a trend line again these are just simple trend lines to give us some visual aid around potentially trying to handicap what the, what the, the the this may look like on the upside a daily chart and here you see not too dissimilar a pattern of what i showed you just a minute ago uh, uh on with the xle uh, in absolute terms, you can kind of see it's coiling up, maybe trying to push higher. Again, this is a relative to the S&P. And lastly, I want to show you one more chart. And this is, I think a lot of people don't look at things this way, which is why I think it's hopefully all the more important for you to look at it this way. If you look at the NASDAQ 100, which has been obviously a raging bull market for the past decade, and you juxtapose that or do a ratio chart versus the XLE, um, again, the energy sector, and I make this a weekly chart, and I have to zoom out a bit more, I have to make it a log chart so it shows up properly, and you can actually see it. And what you can see here is 
uh, back in the year 2000, you can see that the NASDAQ 100 started to overshoot. It pulled back then relative to energy stocks. Then uh, it rallied again to a lower high, and then that was kind of it. And that this may also be a sort of proxy to the broader market, by the way. And I think we're at a juncture right now where something similar is happening, where we've had a big rally. The uh, NASDAQ 100 uh, has started to underperform versus uh, energy, balancing a little bit here, although not so notably, and ultimately maybe we start breaking down. So um, that's quite interesting to me. If you're asking yourself, what about some individual equities? Let me show you a couple of them, uh, broadly just in the energy space that are interesting, uh, at least to me. One of them is kind of CoPhillips, C-O-P. Not surprisingly, it looks quite similar to what I just showed you before in the XLE chart, the energy sector, uh, a stock that's essentially struggled to get above 48 bucks for some time uh, and hold there at least, uh, happened in July uh, or June 2020, so last year, failed there, failed there again in January of 2021, and now after a 15% correction, it's getting back to this point. I think at some point sooner rather than later, the odds are pretty good that we start to break above there. How about Chevron? I think a name that everyone knows. Maybe you got gas there today for all I know. Um, you know, I've made some, a few more annotations here just to kind of make this uh, visually appealing. But you can kind of see the consolidation periods led to breakouts. And we've now, for all intents and purposes, had a consolidation period since November of last 2020. Uh, that I think ultimately sooner rather than later, and when I say sooner rather than later, maybe like the next month or two as of this recording, uh, we may start seeing some more upside. So uh, there you have it, a bit of an analysis on the XLE, the energy market, the energy sector uh, of equities, a um, couple individual stocks, Chevron and and and, uh, and, um, and ConocoPhillips. I hope this has been helpful. If you enjoyed this and you um, liked it, give us a thumbs up like, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.